Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek. Um, before we get started on this, I, this is we're doing yet another. Um, what did we think of a certain thing we just watched? And yeah, this week we're, we're talking about Peacemaker. And oh my gosh, oh. I love it, hate it so much. Uh, oh, we'll get into it. it in a minute. But we are going to, I just want to, for the future, just so everyone is aware, we are going to be going back into our, a lot more of our conversational mm-hmm. shows. So I mean, we got a Simpson episode coming up. We got some other stuff coming up. So it's yeah, just like our show. We're just kind of kind of get back mm-hmm. into our groove. So. Yeah, if you like our our our, uh, our conversational stuff, hold on, we'll be back. Yeah. Okay. So now we're talking peace peacemaker, and I'm Dub. I'm here with Tyler. I'm here with Skeeter, and we're here with Kevin. And yeah, this episode. Oh, well, it's not even an episode. We're talking about the whole show of the peacemaker. Yeah. Um, what's your what? Was your thought on Peacemaker before we started watching it? Let's start with Skeeter. So I was trying to figure out, like, wait, did he die? Did he not die? What's going on? I saw the opening credits and it was over. Like, um, it didn't matter if he was dead or not. Um, I was so prepared for one of the greatest things I've ever watched. Um, ever. Because it just, I knew it was going to be awesome. Well, that's some high expectations. What about you, Kevin? Um, the, well, the last episode. No, just in general, show. when you first started watching it. Oh, oh, this show is, it was changed as I, as I watched it. I started about halfway through the season. So I watched like four episodes and then, then every week. Mm-hmm. And the show went from, eh, this is fun, but I don't know. And to, and, it changed into this is a complete blast. I can't wait for second season. I love yeah. the characters, the world, everything. Now, try to edit this and clean it up as much as you can. But we were talking about this show on Marco Polo because we have a group. Our, our everybody that's on the show is has access to our Marco Polo. And we just talk all day because we're nerds. Um, and I would like Kevin is as cleaned up as you can make it. What was the conversation we had? That said, oh my gosh, I need to watch this show. There was a particular thing we were oh, talking yeah. about, John Cena. Can you, can you clean Cena's, that up? And- <laughs> yeah, John Cena's manhood. Listen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, a good, that's a good way to say it. We were talking. I had not seen Suicide Squad. We were having a conversation. I believe it was Dub mentioned John Cena's manhood. And I'm like, wait a second. I think I kind of need to see this because as a guy, as a straight white male, I'm curious. You know, so I uh, that would that would make, make you less straight, squad. but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looked at the image on Suicide Squad. I was like, all right, I got to watch Suicide Squad. I got to watch the show now, and it did not disappoint. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? What about you, Tyler? Uh, how do I follow that? Um, yeah, how do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I watched Suicide Squad when it came out in the theaters, and Peacemaker was just such an enjoyable character in. I had heard rumors they were going to do a show, and then they confirmed it. I was like, what is this going to be? This is going to be bonkers, because everybody who's seen Suicide Squad, there, there's a couple lines at the very beginning when you meet Peacemaker that just, they're just so out of left field, and I obviously can't repeat a lot of them. But this is going to be a hard one to keep clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it is. But you know, just seeing how that character's mind works or didn't work, it was just... I knew I was going to be in for a heck of a ride. Okay. So I want to hit this right off. Now, this isn't going to be a trash on Peacemaker no. conversation. We all love this, but there um, are some definite issues that I have. Um, and just like with every show, I want to kind of get my grievances out first. <laughs> I have three big ones, but this first, first one I want to talk about is, so this Peacemaker is, pretty different from the comic books let's be honest yeah peacemaker is probably nobody's favorite character um he's 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 an old charles charlton or charlatan um creation from you know the question all those guys come out of that he's he's nobody's favorite so what my issue was was um what's his name uh the director gun james gun 
James Gunn had specific instructions for John Cena. Do not read any of the source material. I do not want it to be colored by anything but my interpretation. This is where I have the issue. Because he's not a well-known character, why don't you just either, A, lean into the character, because there are some people that have read the, the, the character and all that, so either lean into it or create your own. You could have created your own in the DC universe and everybody would have been happy. Everyone would have been happier because you're not crapping on the what we all love with, <laughs> with comic books. I'd like to get your guys' thoughts on this. It's not a big deal for you. Let's start with um, Skeeter again on this one. So I, I've learned um, a lot that you really needed to – I need to drop my – my comic book expectation. Um, you know, I, I don't, if, if you, if you try to stick to comic book, if you try to stick to lore and history and all those things, you're probably going to be disappointed. Um, however, James Gunn, as much as he tries to, to like bounce around in mm-hmm. the comic, it, you know, story, he does, a great job of creating his own. And mm-hmm. that's what I like to see. I like to see going beyond the comic book. Now, if I'm going to get a backstory, you better stick to the book. And they did. But if I'm going <laughs> to, and, and they didn't, but if I'm going to get a story beyond, make it your own. Like, don't like make your own comic book. And that's, I think that's like being geeks. I think that's what we want. Want this, this whole show, everything we do to get out to people and say, Hey, we're geeks. Go do your own. Exactly. Like we, we follow our own path, our own beat. Do it your way. And that's what he does. And I love it. Yeah. Kevin, what about you? Well, the benefit I had is that I had no, I feel like I had, didn't have a dog in this fight. I didn't know. Because you didn't know about him. Yeah. I didn't know about him. And so I'm starting, starting fresh. And to me, I think it made it more enjoyable. Um, because I was like, who is this guy? What's going on? And it kind of, um, so I didn't notice a lot of those, a lot of those differences or any of the differences really. Yeah. That, that so it didn't, didn't bother me. That's, that's, that, that's fair. I, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up at the end on that. Uh, what about you, Tyler? Um, <clears throat> well, while I do fully understand what the point you're making and you know, why you might feel that way. It really wasn't a point of contention for me, just for the fact that once I saw, I mean, all right, we had Guardians already, and then we got Suicide Squad. Once I saw what James Gunn could do, and we've gotten to know him a bit with the comic book stuff, I had full trust that whatever he was going to put out was going to be something awesome. And I don't, I really don't think that the end product let me down or many of us down at all. Um, yeah. So, and much like Kevin, I did not know the source material before this. I was not first in peacemaker or anything um so you know it was just kind of all new to me anyway um, yeah. obviously i did a little research and stuff to find out who is this character you know where he come from and all that but i don't the differences that now i can pick up still don't really bother me too much i think he you know put out an excellent product that's fair now let's say with with me i mean a big big issue is I've I've run into Peacemaker probably five or six times in my readings. I it's a character I I don't care about. However, I do believe in honoring the character itself. Um, you can't make these big changes to a character because make your own. Be creative and make your own. And you can make a Peacemaker knockoff in this that no one would know. Be the wiser, and it could be its own thing it could i mean you're, you're you could create a new harley quinn like they did in the batman uh cartoon i mean no one had heard there was no such thing as, as harley quinn before that and they create a new character we could have the same thing with peacemaker you know that's and that's part of i think why people are so accepting for everything harley does is because this you, we saw the the beginnings of it they right. didn't have to change a character to make it fit kevin you had something well, one of the, the reasons why I was saying about this over the past couple of weeks is why, right? Mm-hmm. And they were not thinking about doing a Peacemaker show until the Suicide Squad, right? Like, to, to me, it seems like they fell in love with the John Cena character as, yeah. as 
as peacemakers, like, oh, let's just give this dude a show. Yeah. And they're, they're, uh, I don't know, that's just kind of the way I was thinking about it. I don't know if it was before or after, but it just, it does seem a little odd that just to pick his character yeah. and just whatever you want with it. I can see that. Well, so, I mean, Cena is just brilliant. And I mean, I never thought I'd say that in my lifetime, but <laughs> yeah. he, I've really, I'm, I'm, I'm all aboard the Cena train. This is, um, let's, I skip everything in his personal life. I don't care. I don't care what his beliefs are. He does a great job of playing a character and he becomes the character and that impresses me. And that comes from the wrestling background, all that y'all don't y'all know about that. But so with that being said, I still love the show. I just wish that they would have, you know, manned up a little bit per se and created their own character. I mean, it could have been this exact character, just change the name. You know, give him a give him a less dopey helmet, I guess. Um, and I do believe that the no. I'm not positive, but <laughs> on on Suicide Squad, um, they had the post credit scene and all that. That was planned before the release of Suicide Squad. So, hmm. yeah. So speaking of Suicide Squad, let's ask this: with the ending of uh, this season, because there is season two. Um, I know the answer to this, but I'm seeing a lot of backlash online, and I would like to hear what you guys think. Is this the end of Suicide Squad? Because they kind of did some things right right at the end. Uh, let's start with Skeeter on this one. Is this the end of Suicide Squad? No. No, I don't think in the Suicide Squad because, I mean, even though, you know, spoiler, I mean, they said, you know, without Amanda, there is no Suicide Squad. Fact. But... Um, what about all of those characters? What about each one of those people that we've already created? You know, can somebody pick up the mantle? Can somebody carry the torch of Amanda Waller without it being Amanda Waller? So, you know, is there somebody out there? Maybe someone from the team um, that already has those connections. You already have the Argus people that were a part of this game. <laughs> Maybe somebody picks up the picks up the torch. Maybe um, you know somebody from the inside. I don't know, okay. but I think we still have Suicide Squad, even with what's happening with yeah. Waller. Yeah. I think she's going to find a way to be Amanda Waller and dig herself out of what just happened. Yeah. Again, I will um, save my retort till everyone's done because I there's some things I want to hit. But uh, Kevin, what about you? Is this the end of Suicide Squad? No. No, 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 God, no. Um, I, I mean, they're going to still do it, but now it's even going to be uh, more covert. Mm-hmm. Like, there's going to be, it, it, there's, I, I don't see them getting rid of it. It's, it is like they've really are building almost their own universe. And it's the only, D, let's be honest with ourselves, it's the only DC universe in the movies that has actually worked. That's a fact. You know, I mean, how are you going to yeah. get rid of it? You can't. And just the money, you know? That's fair. Go figure it out. Tyler? Um, personally, I no, I don't think it's going to be the end of Suicide Squad. I just think the mission's going to change, per se. Um, whether they do something where maybe they can disarm those things in their heads and the team turns against Amanda Waller, um, something yeah. like that, or turns against you know the department she worked with, uh, I, don't, I don't know what dire- direction they're going to go, but I know a couple directions I like to see them go. Um, Fair. Like second season of, of Peacemaker, I'd love to see them cutting that. Save thing that. Out save it, save second know. season. Save second season. We are going to talk about it. So right, save that okay. one. Okay. But yeah, I do want to hit that in depth in a second. Absolutely. But yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I don't see her leading the Suicide Squad. I think there's going to be some some combativeness there, you know. Fair she's, enough. Uh, like you said, though, she's probably going to dig herself out of that hole somehow. And she's going to be. She's Amanda Waller. She has to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, this is my problem with a lot of the people that are online that present themselves as experts, like writers for big, um, huge, like, uh, publications. I'm not going to name any of them, but they said, this has got to be the end of suicide squad. There's no way they can get away with this. Blah, blah, blah. 1988. What is 1988? The first year that suicide squad in comic books went public. It's, been going on for years and years the the government knows about them people know about them yes they hide more amanda waller is the only in 
logical intellect in the DC universe that can go toe to toe with Batman. Do you think this is really an issue? Come on now. They, people don't give Waller enough credit on how important she is to the DC universe. And I, I, I wanted to bring this up more than anything is because no Suicide Squad is not done and people should do their research before calling themselves an expert and saying they're, well, the, you know, it's done that they're, they're, they just wanted to write this out. That's Amanda Waller is that important of a character. And it was dumb. To, well, now would be a way for them to actually explore the Amanda Waller character. Yeah. Which, which is going to be fun in and of itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that Viola Davis, as much as I'm not a super fan of her, at least she's not Angela Bassett. Um, I like my, I want it. I want my Waller to be fat. I want her to be the wall. Viola Davis, while she's not obese, she's definitely not Angela Bassett. I'll put it that way. Um, so it, it, it's a happy medium. But I just say I like a big, if you, if you watch any of the cartoons in the past, see her in any of the comic books, I don't want hot Amanda Waller at all, if that makes sense. But just a, I think that I would watch a series based on just her inner workings because she is so vile, but so smart. And so she's mm-hmm. cutthroat, but she will get the mission done. And that's I that's the only reason why I bring that up is because no Suicide Squad is not over. And I know a lot of people are saying it is. It is not. It's not even up for discussion. Um, well, she um, she proved who she was, I think, in the in the first. Uh, in the first Suicide Squad. You know, Will Smith, all oh, that whole crew. I, I think she proved who she was with, you know, just literally. Um, who was the 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 Indian guy that freaked off and tried to repel up the side of the building and tried to leave and she blew uh, her hat. Ricochet or something like that. I uh, something like that. Record. I can't remember what it was. It, it was I had. It's, it's Some honestly strange and, name. again, great DC way of introducing D list characters. Yep. Yeah, and killing totally. Them. And and she just showed her, her ruthlessness with that. She showed her ability to <coughs> manipulate the 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 joint chiefs and whoever else that was, and even her own in daughter the in this. One. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, and now she brings her daughter in, like, and, and she still manipulated the entire situation from through her daughter. Yeah. which she's got power. Yeah. No matter where you look yeah. at it, she's got power. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sleep on Amanda Waller. She is a fantastic character. She's one of those ones I'd suggest go back and just do some research because she is so fascinating. She is probably one of the more fascinating non-powered people in the DC universe, period. Okay, so now let's get on to some of the characters. We're going to kind of go through some of them one at a time and blah. Yeah. So first one we're going to talk about is, of course, Peacemaker. Chris, what is his last name in this? Smith. Smith. Is Smith. How that is the most generic name in the world. What's so different from the comic version in a, in more than a few ways, but we're going to forget about the comic version now. What a fun character. Just, oh. I mean, if there's anybody ever built to be a superhero was John Cena. He oh, is the living like body. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to hear just everybody's thoughts on Peacemaker himself, which what's your, the pluses, the minuses, whatever. Skeeter, we'll start with you again. So, uh, what is there not to say? The, I mean, you can think of you can think about John Cena however you want to see it. This dude has come into his own as a comic action action comic actor. Um, More interesting you know, than The Rock. Uh, oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. Far and away. I mean, I love The Rock. Don't get me wrong. You know, if you can smell what I'm cooking, but literally this is just John Cena as Peacemaker has everything you want, you know, and it's crazy because he's got like these skeletons in his closet. He's got all these things in his head and he's got an eagle for a pet eagle that hugs him, hugs him, hugs him. Yeah. And I mean that says something about him. Even the the, the choosing of a name, Eagley. He's not the Eagly. most cre- this, this this character is not the most creative guy in the world. But he's he's dumb and genuine. Yeah, it's just ah, just so awesome. Kevin, <laughs> what about you, bud? 
I don't, you said eagerly. I was just thinking that the, the last episode where she's like, I saw a beagle hug a person and I knew I had to stay. It was a sign. Well, why don't you think it was a sign to run away? I don't know. I just, that's hilarious <laughs> to me. <laughs> the look on her face. But no, uh, as I'm watching this, the John, John Cena as Peacemaker, this dude has amazing facial, facial emotions. He's know how to emotion. We know that comes from his wrestling background. That's all wrestling is, is emotion from your face a lot of times. And what a very layered character um, with a, with a huge dark backstory, you know, he's essentially created to be a villain and yeah. he came out of it. And that's why that conflicting, that's why he was the quote unquote part of the bad guys from the suicide squad. And it's him coming out of that to try to break away from his, this evil, evil villain. That was his dad, was super layered character. And he's, he's Punisher meets Deadpool meets Harley Quinn. I mean, I think that oh, you yeah. can't get any more clear than that. that one on what he is. Yeah, Kevin. All right, sorry, Tyler. I, I'm going to do that all. It's the beards. I think it is. Uh, <laughs> you no, show more of that beard there, Kevin. It's Peacemaker. He is fun. That is a fun character. I am. I've been living in a Peacemaker world for the last week. It's we've watched the whole <laughs> season last night again. Like it's just, I love this character. Uh, the one we got in this series, Kevin nailed it. He is layered. Um, he starts out giving you the impression he is just that dumb pile of muscle. And but yeah. then you you learn he's actually rather observant and he picks up on things that you wouldn't figure he would. Um he's I think because the trauma when he was a kid, maybe that's why he's still very immature in his mind. Um, you know, he names his eagerly. Come on. You know, he's not exactly a, a full grown scholar here. Um, but he's Oh, just, he didn't graduate eighth grade, you guarantee it. Right. You know, but just with everything you learn about the character throughout the series, you know, I've never seen a character that is so ridiculous that could have moments in a show or series or movie that would almost bring you to tears. You yeah. Know, it's just, it's and just, he, the, the emotion he portrayed yeah. as an actor, John Cena, just, I was very surprised because he looks like a galoot, you know, he's yeah. just, but no, he's, he's got some talent. You just need to use it the right way. And they did yeah. here. Peter, you had something? Did, did anybody else melt a little bit when he sits down at the piano and oh. starts to freaking oh. Motley Crue roll? That was the I'm best. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. I, yep. Yeah. I was done. I was sold. I'm I'm a fan until it's no longer. Like, oh uh-huh. my god. What yeah. an amazing show <laughs> character, <laughs> man. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so let's move on to Vigilante. Now, <laughs> this I, I love this this rendition of, of Vigilante, but again, he's not the comic books. The, um, I haven't read this personal Vigilante. Um, I've read up to three because there's there's I think he were up to like five or six Vigilantes now. Um, my favorite one oh, being the cowboy one. And if you watch the Justice League series, you know who I'm talking about. Rose the motorcycle and he has the six shooters, blah, blah. He's a fun guy. This vigilante, it's, he's kind of like a overly sincere and nerdy punisher. I don't know exactly how I would, I don't know how I would describe him, but he was, the show needed him. If we didn't have this vigilante, the show's not going anywhere. It's, he was very important to the plot and to, um, He's like the best friend that you weren't really friends with, but he was always there. This is that guy. And, but he's really good at what he does. I mean, he, he was, he's never like a clod. He's never like klutzy. He's like the best at everything he does, which is really with his personality. It doesn't go with it. Unless he's tossing a grenade. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and, and he throws it four feet away. And stands there. Um, I think that this character, um, is definitely made to be on the spectrum, the artistic spectrum. Oh, yeah. He doesn't understand, like, for instance, when they had the conversation, well, did, did you see anything? Well, I saw two squirrels over there. Why are you talking about squirrels? We're looking for the helmet. Well, you need to be more specific. And he wasn't doing it to be a jerk. He was just, that was his understanding. Mm-hmm. And I felt like he was definitely made to be on the spectrum without, again, 
you know, they've, they've done some things on this, like with, with the making Peacemaker bisexual. They didn't make a deal out of it. They said it was, it was in, in passing. It was the same thing with the vigilante thing. I'm like, okay, so he's autistic, but they're not making a thing out of it. And I, I appreciate it when they do that on these yeah. shows. Because it doesn't mm-hmm. need to be a thing. You can you can make your statements without forcing it down anybody's throat. And that was done very right. Skeeter, what's your thoughts on Vigilante? Um, so one of my favorite things about Vigilante was, I mean, when he was in his alter ego. Um, it's not me. That's not what? Who? <laughs> oh, yeah. Snow cheese. And you believe that no one's noticed. <laughs> like that. but. I got the full. I don't remember the Ticks sidekick, but the TV, sh- the the cartoon, oh. the Tick, even the oh, live yeah. action Mothman. version, Mothman. Same. I got the same kind of vibe. Yeah. From Mo- you know, from that I did that. Um, you know, one of my other favorite vigilantes was from the Arrowverse. Um, just he was, and I didn't realize that was kind of the same character until. I did some research and found out that there's been multiple iterations, but I just loved how, like, I mean, he just was ruthless. He was this ruthless killer, cut heads off arms, you name it, he did it. But he was just like, hi, how you doing? With no conscience you know? whatsoever. No, just didn't feel uh, it. He didn't have like, a the prison when he went to jail, like everything that I just, oh my gosh, great stuff. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, he is the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, Vigil- <laughs> vigilante is Deadpool without the voices and the breaking the fourth wall. He is. I loved. I loved. I loved vigilante. Um, I liked him better with the mask than without. I think Tyler mentioned that uh, a couple weeks ago, but um, just the gift that keeps on giving, man. He's Glasses such a- were too much. That was my problem with that. Oh, whenever, whenever he would just, anytime that he was on in a scene, you knew it was something was going to happen. It was going to be freaking hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Tyler. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like Kevin mentioned, uh, we had talked about it. Yet. I, I love vigilante. As long as he's in costume, for I don't know, I I don't know if he puts the costume on and does something for him. When he takes it off and he's just acting, it, it's it's it, to me it's two different people. And the one without the costume is super annoying. Um, I I don't know what it was about it. When when you get vigilante in a scene though, like he is, he's he's Deadpool. You know, he's got no emotion, no feeling towards yeah. anything going on around him. And you know, with the with the family snipe, sniping the family and everything, he just. <laughs> You know, just do, 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 you know, taking them out. Did not care. It's just it, that's that's that Deadpool esque kind of personality. You know, we all love, and there could be no better com- um, companion for someone like Peacemaker. Because yeah, at the end of the day, Peacemaker is just a g- dumb Neanderthal half the time, and then you got Vigilante, who is refined. You would, you would think he's pretty, pretty uh smart and a little. He's a bit immature, but yet he, I don't know, he guides Peacemaker in a weird way. Yeah. You know, he just, uh, he seemed to point him in different directions. Like when he showed up at the window and stuff and they just had that whole exchange and everything. He brings something out in Peacemaker, I think. Yeah. And, and I loved it every time he came on screen. They Very fit. Good. Yeah. They fit oh, together yeah. really well. And I agree. They On paper, they shouldn't because they're kind of the same character in a lot of ways, but they're not. Right. So I mean they shouldn't fit, but they do. So props to to uh, to Mr. Gunn for pulling that one off. Okay, so now let's go to one of my issues I have. Augie Smith, also known as the White Dragon. Um, this was a huge withdrawal. Uh, yeah, withdrawal from the from the comic books. Um, I didn't. I felt like this was one of those things we're going to. Oh well. You know what? We need to have a white pride guy in here, and he's going to be the big bad. And honestly, if you're going to keep this character, you don't kill him like you killed him. You go, he should have been the big bad in the second season. Period. That was not a. Yeah. 
I feel like that that whole thing was a wasted opportunity. He had no redeeming qualities and bad guys are not interesting unless you give them redeeming qualities. He had zero. Did he play the part? Well, yes, but I had, I felt like he was just a statement and nothing else. If that makes sense. I'm trying to tame my language as much as possible on that, but I felt like it was just, okay. I, I didn't care. Now, before we get into you guys talking about what um, your thoughts on this character, I want to, at the end, when he's dead and he sits down next next to Peacemaker, spoilers, I have a theory on that. I, I think he, he is dead, but I think that this character implanted himself into the helmets, so he's literally a part of Chris's brain. So he's not going anywhere. That that's where I I don't think he's just crazy. I think that he is that is literally the essence of Augie Smith. Put his conscience into the helmet. He's caught. He put his consciousness into basically whatever Chris but was wearing. End, he's not wearing a helmet. He's, he's not. But I think it implanted himself in his brain because no one else was going to wear. Wasn't a helmets. comic book movie. I have. I. I almost disagree, but <laughs> it's a comic. But book you can movie, see right? where that where I'm coming from, so and I, I think that would be. Yeah. That'll be a lot more interesting than just he's going to be sitting there haunting him. I want to see him, that would be his amazing. consciousness. I think that's that will make for an interesting second season mm-hmm. for him to be to still be a big bad. So, what's your thoughts on White Dragon slash Augie Smith Skeeter? So, um, we must be we must be longtime friends, though, because uh, <laughs> literally, I feel like no matter what. Augie Smith is going to be the big bad. No matter mm-hmm. what. He's dead, but where's he at? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He is going to make Peacemaker slash Chris Smith do things that he doesn't no want matter to do. what. Mm-hmm. You know, he, did he implant himself in the helmets? But I take it back farther to his childhood, uh, to killing his brother. Uh, to all the things that happened and probably much more that we haven't seen yeah. yet. Um, so I feel like there can be a, a a voice in your head that's continuously the bad. And I think that that's who Augie Smith is. I yeah. think he's the, the voice in, in Peacemaker's head that says, I don't want bad people alive. And I'm going to continue to seek out the bad person but he's up here. Yeah. yeah and in his consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we're going to be. I mean, the whole time. Yeah. So I like it. Kevin. Um, he's going to be the bad angel. You know, you had the good angel and the bad angel. And I just, I just see him from this point forward being that, that bad angel. Um, I didn't, I hated the character, but I, I would feel odd if, anybody said they loved that character because he was such a vile vile <laughs> character you know but in the comics he's kind of a vile character as well so yeah. you know it's he's a mm, white supremacist no. superhero i mean not he doesn't really <laughs> exist like that in the comic books that's new <laughs> he's we'll talk about it later i um oh. but um yeah no i I didn't, I didn't care for him, but it was, it was interesting him being a super smart white supremacist, which is not usually how they're portrayed. They're usually the dumb as the dumb, you know, but he's like this super uber genius white supremacist. So that was, it was odd, but. Very good. Okay. Tyler, your thoughts. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I know we went back and forth on this. I, I think the, the fact that he's haunting him is just part of they, what they did draw from the comics because his father, you know, haunts him in the comics like that. And I think that, that they just kind of pulled some of that. And he's just going to be that that force to push him forward and keep doing evil mm-hmm. here and there. Because, you know, that he's a lot of times in the comics, you know, that's what it was. The voices of the people he killed lived in his helmet and kept him going, doing bad things and killing who he needed to kill for peace. And, yeah, you know, uh, I think they're just going to have that just, beach. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to that beach. Um, <laughs> you know, I just, the dad haunting him, I think is going to be, it's going to be that for him yeah. going forward. Um, and 
he's he's nuts in the comics. I mean, yeah. Basically. And let's let's be honest, he wasn't exactly a super sound mind throughout this show. Sure. Um, he displayed some nuttiness there, and I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I'm not saying anything against it, but that's why yeah. I think he's haunting him like that. Uh, just the fact that we got White Dragon in the costume and everything was amazing. Yeah, because the costume is really cool. But then when they took him out the way they did, I, Too I easy. feel I feel your sentiment there. And you know, and I mean, hey, you can't you can't blame him. Like, hey, look, he is what he is. He's he's a Nazi. He's a supremacist. Who wouldn't like to just take him out? You know? Yeah. Um, I don't even know why I'm trying to dance around that. You know? it's just, it's because he's a, a bad guy. Here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's a bad guy. He's the baddest of the bad, really. And you know, that it was very interesting choice to go that route because I that's the one. Thing I didn't like about what James Gunn did, his interpretation in the comics, you know, his, at a young age, his dad takes his life in front of him. And I thought that was just so dark and traumatizing and made it very interesting. Yeah. And, and explained a lot. You know, obviously, yes, you know, his brother died. So he still got that trauma by the kid. So they could play. But it's a different life. kind of trauma. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they would have kept it to the same origin with his dad. You know? Yeah. And that's what I was talking about, Kevin. We hit that earlier with the dad. I think it's much more interesting that he took his he took his own life in front of him. I think that's a more important. I think. Anyway, okay, so let's pop on to probably my least favorite part of the show, and that's the Scooby Squad. No. Um, sorry, really? I I thought that they were strictly plot devices. That other, I mean, the um, Steve Agrogi, whatever his name is, he's okay. Um, I think that the chick from Orange is the New Black, uh, Leota on the show, she's okay. Didn't care. I mean, I didn't really oh. feel a connection with, with the blonde. Any of them. I didn't really feel a connection with them. But I think it's because Peacemaker and Vigilante were so good. I don't think you could keep up. And that, that I did lump them together, but because I don't really want to spend all day talking about them. But I think, I don't know. Am I wrong on this one? Start with you, Skeeter. He loved Die Beard. Um, I think that that his role was absolutely hilarious. Um, you know, just because he was the he was the brunt of the joke every time. Yeah. Um, not not just not just Peacemaker being you know almost yeah you know eighth grade level uh, education type of situation, but I just think that. The other folks were just bodies. I mean, Harcourt was, I don't know, you kind of wanted to see that that weird romantic thing that they had going. You wanted to yeah. see that come to fruition a little bit. Um, but you don't. Waller's you know, daughter. Mess. <laughs> yeah, Waller's daughter. like Too conflicted, to be honest. Yeah, there was way too much going on with her relationship. But then her relationship with Peacemaker and then all this other stuff being forced by being manipulated by her mom. And then the leader of the whole Scooby snack crew yeah. like that, yeah. just that was out of left field. So did did were they needed? No, I like Amanda Waller's daughter being in that. Um, I think they used her properly, but they could have done without the rest of of the crew um, and done something a little different. Yeah, um, they they were yeah, strictly they showed, plot devices. They, yeah, they showed that they didn't need, you know, them, you know, strictly for more than just plot devices, as yeah. we saw. Kevin, I, I kind of disagree with everybody here. Good, like, I'd like to hear thing, it. The one thing James Gunn has proven that he can do is create layered characters, mm -hmm. and you have the one um, I forgot his name, the super the the, the computer guy. Um, Oh, the beard, old die, old die beard, is the entire time he's the part of the joke. But then the last episode, Johnny Cotamos on the show, yeah. he just starts breaking off the layers again, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, people make fun of my beard, and I thought nobody noticed until somebody keeps on saying it." Then Very you true. have, then you have uh, Oleota. She's the Kevin Hart character, you know. Even with the the full on kiss at the end of the show, she's the Kevin Hart, and it's. Uh, uh, the rookie cop 
that's growing into their own and then fights a bad guy and then goes back to his wife. It's, it's, it's a lot of times it's a black male character, but this time it's a black woman character. Um, and I, uh, I, I appreciated the entire Scooby squad because I think each one of them brought something different to the table. That's fair. Tyler. Yep. I'm glad I have an ally here, Kevin. Um, I, I, I agree. You know, it's, I think they all had some aspect that they brought to the table. They, they grew throughout the show. You know, you can see a hardcore, you know, she was that just no nonsense, strictly business. I ice running through my veins. And then she started warming up with this goofy ragtag group of dudes and ladies she's hanging out with and kind of, you know, realizing that she can be alive and have mm-hmm. a heartbeat again. And, uh, you know, then you had um, Amanda Waller's daughter, who I did not like the first, like, two episodes, and then she started to grow on me. I couldn't stand her. <clears throat> Absolutely. I, you know, she started growing on me, though. And at, at, towards the end, I loved it. You know, it was great. Um, she was a little bit of that moral guy, you know. Um, it, of course, uh, Guy Beard, the economist, he was, he was hilarious. I love him throughout the whole thing. I loved him in Suicide Squad. I enjoyed him being there. Just but he's a he, comedian, period. He's he is just such a computer geek, and he plays it so well. You know, he's just like you know, no, I'm not getting. I am not athletic. I I don't get my hands dirty. I am gonna <laughs> sit here and type, and yeah. and then when it's time to do something, he finally steps up, and it's the greatest thing because it's just like he, he doesn't he doesn't legs. know how to hit him with a tire iron. He keeps trying to run away and then come back and hit him again. <laughs> just the whole thing, you know, is so fun. Uh, I I think. They they definitely added something, um, and with with the two the two uh, hardcore and the other guy that ended up being a butterfly. I think if you'd put them with like an elite squad, you know, this mission would have been done and over with. So yeah. putting them with these other characters really made it a fun time. You know. Yeah, cause I I just I wish they would have handled them different. That's just me. I I. I wasn't interested. I see how they needed to be there because they were plot points, but I didn't feel like I cared. And that that's, I mean, with the exception of the, the what's her name? Leola um, from Orange the New Black. Um, yeah, it was, and I, I think the Economos character was kind of funny. Um, I definitely cared, man. When they, I mean, he was, when they had homegirl choking on her blood there at the, the, episode, oh. the last episode, I was getting worried. And I was like, no, this oh. is you know, no. like, I was hearing rumors of like something big happening. I'm like, is this the thing? Is this it? Are they going to kill her off? And Vigilante? I see him laying over there. He just got shot. You know, I was like, oh. This okay. the, one of the most laugh out loud thing. And every the, every episode had a laugh out loud. He's like, don't go. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Don't do it. Don't go. And then finally, he just takes one and he takes one step and does a compound fracture to his leg. <laughs> it's just, don't go. You're going to get hurt. No, no. Oh, snap. <laughs> okay, now, before we get into just the final things we liked and didn't like about this, let's, let's, I, what did you guys think about the false finish that they put in there when the butterfly started to explain everything? I was genuinely getting mad and I was going to cancel this episode. Yep. If I <laughs> thought he was going to say, you know what? You're right. Cause that's, Oh, right. right. There was points in this show that that felt like that would definitely be okay. I almost, if that would have went, I was convinced when I was yelling my TV at that moment, yeah. cause I felt like they were really trying to make that the thing. Did anybody yeah, else have those Thanos feelings? Moment. It, it was, it was really, I was, I mean, I, no. honestly, we would not be doing the show right now if that would have gone that way. So it'd been so bad. That been bad. But that would have changed the entire show. It would have changed the entire story. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same way. I'm like, are we really? Have I been watching this show for this long to be something to be shoehorned in here right now? Like, it. I, I appreciate. Hey, no, listen. Everybody has their own chance. But yeah, no, I was right there with you, Dub. By far. Yeah. Skeeter, what about you? Oh gosh! So I, I'm sitting there. Going, okay, so she is the butterfly that he was feeding, that he was having conversations with, yeah. that he was treating really kindly, and maybe he really changed the world for this butterfly. And then I went seriously, like 
Is that all of this craziness? Everybody's dying, and this is going to change everything for Peacemaker? Like, this is going to be the good butterfly of all of it? I was like, is this from the writers of Lost? And then James <laughs> Gunn comes out and was like, not today. Yeah. Not today, <laughs> Satan. And he was like, today, right? Satan. But there's one thing. Human torpedo. <laughs> I was like, yeah. no! <laughs> And we knew that was coming. Like, yeah. Come on. Oh, that oh, had to come. helmet on. You knew it was Just coming standing, more than was. She's standing oh, yeah. up all woozy. Uh, ah! <laughs> Tyler, what about you? And then we'll we'll finish up this. Yeah, that was part. Uh, human torpedo is a very Drax moment. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, no, I I was I was right there with you. I was don't let this be the thing. It, yeah, because it felt like it was going end, to really. It you know, so it felt like it was oh, going to. Yeah, you know, we're. We're Thanos. We we're gonna do things for your be- your your own good. You know we know better than you. Um, no, it, it definitely wasn't. Thank you, James Gunn. Yeah. Um, it ended exactly how it should have at that point. You know. <laughs> so yeah, I got Fair a little enough. worried, but I'm glad it ended the way it did. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna talk about the the ending, right? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. okay so, well, let, let's hit this and then we're going to hit ending and what we want to see with season two. So right. I want to hear this. Tell me something you liked and didn't like from this show in general. And I, I want to name two something I loved the soundtrack. You could not do a better soundtrack for this. This is a James Gunn soundtrack. I mean, let's be honest, instead of doing uh-huh. early eighties stuff, we're doing late eighties hair metal and everybody was in, it just fit. Um, and then but something I didn't like, and this is something we've just dis- we've discussed on the Marco before. I did not like I don't like nudity in my superhero shows. Yes, this is not for kids at all. But I mean, even the nudity just felt so dirty and ugly in this, if that makes sense. It's just like, ew. Yeah. No. But that I Agree or disagree, I don't care. That's just my impression from it. But that was one thing I liked and didn't like from this this series. Skeeter, give me something you liked and didn't like. Liked? um, I mean, there was so much to like. I really, really... um, As kind of difficult as it was, um, I just... I loved how Die Beard, like... In the moment that he had to do what he had to do, he did it. Chainsaw, yeah. um, oh. you know, Bruce Campbell moment, attack his dad, <laughs> like all those pieces. I was just like, what? Great. Those were things that they just pulled out. I think that I, I just loved Peacemaker through the whole thing. I loved that whole aspect. Every his writing was was spot on. Um, the things I, the thing I didn't like, the thing that kind of really threw me off was like the massive infestation of the butterflies. Oh yeah. Like what the heck is going on? And then it's the whole, all the, the whole sheriff's department, all the cops and then all the, the inmates. And then it would take like, over a whole a state. Yeah. They were, yeah. yeah. I didn't understand. And then they were going to, they were going to, the, the last part was the, they were going to transport the, the cow to Maine. Like, I, why not? I just, I was like, what is the point? Why, why, what, what are we doing? Yeah. And I just, it kind of got lost in all weird stuff, but I mean, they made up for it with laughter and just bloodshed. Yeah. That was a fantastic fight scene at the end. Oh, yeah. Kevin, give me something you like, something you didn't like. There were so many, you know, the part where they, uh, where he cut the gorilla in half with a chainsaw vertically. Uh, Just that's, that's the greatest scene I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, no, you need to get out more. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I do, brother. I do. Um, there was the, the laugh out loud moments. I can't, really pick one every episode had at least two or three absolutely laugh out loud moments when when that oh. when that scene with the gorilla which is is probably one of my favorite scenes is i actually had to pause it for a second because i was laughing so hard 
that I, I didn't want to miss what was going to happen after it. So I actually paused it so I could stop laughing and then push play again. Um, that was probably my favorite scene of the entire movie. Um, think one of the things I didn't like is, is the fact that it did, it played, I don't like politics in ever. In my, my, yeah. Yes. I don't, man. We I, all I agree. want to protect the world. I believe in women's rights. I believe, you know what I mean? Like I'm a normal human. But I don't want things to be shoehorned, and some and in the first, and that's one of the thing problems the I had in the episodes, beginning. Yep. Is is it seemed like they were shoehorning a lot of things in, and then they it kind of like died down. So I I appreciate it, it did, but um, yeah, that's what I didn't like is the fair shoehorning enough. like they were doing. That's fair, Tyler. Um, for what I did like, it was just the overall absurdity of everything. Yeah, I that stuff attracts me, man. I I love you know Toxic Avenger type stuff and just mm -hmm. just Deadpool humor and just ridiculous stuff. This show was chock full of it from the get go. The the opening sequence is just so dumb that it's just so <laughs> it just you can't not like it. Like, do you want to taste it? I, I listen. I listen to that in my car. Like, that's it's in my it's, Spotify it's, list. I'm not gonna amazing. lie. Amazing. <laughs> Every time I see that, I'm usually watching this like. Late at night, my kids are in bed, my wife's falling asleep and all this and that. And I'm just sitting there nice, quiet. That comes on and I just smile, you know? Um, and there's a lot of that throughout all the episodes. They're just the gorilla and just John's, well, there's a lot John's, of stuff I can't say on Yeah. This, you know? <laughs> family friendly, family friendly. Yeah, you know, just, uh, you know, that's He's what I man. loved about it. Um, because that not only did they do all that absurdity, but they made you care about so much, too. And I really appreciate that. I think that's good writing. You know, it's just, yeah. When you could draw all the feels while cutting a gorilla in half. And it's just, it's so, and having a floating cow and just, oh, it's, it was amazing. What I didn't like, it really just, you know, like the one thing I said, the, the, the origin of the dad and what they did with the dad, I think they should have kept him around. If they were going to do what they were doing, I, it, it, he went away really quick. Um, I'm hoping that the fact that he's haunting him kind of changes my mind on that. Um, you know, next season, hopefully that'll play in, in a big way to where I'm like, okay, cool. You went, you went a great you know, direction, but I think that he could have been the big, the big, big bad, bad. You know? instead but of a we'll side see. note. Yeah. Yeah. I know we keep hammering on that, but that's just, that it was disappointing, honestly, because if you're going to make a guy, a character that bad, make it mean something. Yeah. And it, uh, if they don't fix it on the second season, I might be pretty upset going in second season. I'll, I'll love the absurdity, but I won't like that because it, that it is what it is now. Okay. So let's talk about the, the, the famous cameo scene at the end. I don't even know how we can talk about it, but it's, it's what every comic book reader has had a discussion about. Yeah. Um, in some point, Usually in junior high, you will have the conversation about Aquaman, and it confirmed. It's, have we confirmed it? Well, I have think we that, uh, this was a con is it this, now canon. This was in this is DCU now canon. That this Aquaman canon now. Has it's it's canon in, in well, a biblical manner. He was <laughs> engaged to Dolphin. Okay. At some point, so yes, okay. it is absolutely confirmed. In the, now in the DCU, the dolphins are mammals. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I, the thing? That, that, line, that line with Barry, his response to Barry. Yeah, yeah I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that they got Momoa and uh, Ezra Miller to yeah. do this. And yes, I mean the the rest of Justice League was so obvious that it was that they weren't there as fake. It blah blah. Didn't matter. Okay. I, it didn't I, matter. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it was pretty cool seeing them. It's like, oh, look, they're here. He's like, oh, thanks for showing up late. <laughs> and his first out. guitaring out nice oh, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> oh yeah <laughs> but it was i say i i thought that was i don't think it could have had a more appropriate ending than that that was good and they, i think they this, melded them they, they, but this does help set up together this now. does help yeah. set up for the rumored so suicide squad versus justice league wow which was a fantastic uh, comic book series by the way even well, there's a video game coming out. Yes, there's a, there's a video game Suicide Squad versus Justice League. Yeah, you know? so I think it's that they're definitely set. They're starting to gear up for that. I thought that was a good way of kind of setting into it. That's what we need, by the way. 
like DC is too like this right here. Give us oh. this. Give me this DC. It's different Please. from Marvel. Let, let it be that. You. Please. Well, no more I want to hear. I want to. You know, I said we we we'll probably do an, even more shows about it. But you know, DC versus Marvel. My opinion: DC has better characters. Use them. Um, okay, but you know what? It, this should be the universe. It's not the Justice League universe because no one cares. You're not. Stop right. trying to be the Avengers. Yes, you have better characters. Use them. Sorry. Okay, I apologize. And, like, what about I, I? I really would love to see like another Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern. Like, shut I think up! That, oh, absolutely, shut your dirty <laughs> pie hole. Okay, so let's move on to <laughs> let's move on to our final our final discussion. What do you want to see with season two? Let's start with Ooh. you, Skeeter. Oh my gosh. Um <laughs> what do we I don't even know. Like I, I would love to see maybe a trip to Bell Bell Rev to Bell Rev. you know, maybe he starts like pulling together the suicide squad. Maybe we we start to get this buildup of a new suicide squad that leads into thanks for showing up late. You know, like, yeah, I want to see it. I want to see it. Yeah. Like you guys never showed up when you were supposed to. We had to do this on our own. So now we're going to fight after school at three o'clock in the parking lot. (laughs) See that? I don't know. Kevin? I want bigger. I want better. I want a bigger chainsaw. And I want them to cut a giraffe from the bottom all the way up. That's what I want. I don't know. Wow. This show is so amazing. And epic that I want. I, I don't know what I want, but I trust James Gunn to give it to me. Just give it to me in my pie hole, James Gunn. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say with that. Uh, Tyler, save us. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, <laughs> I, you know, season two, man, they got to go bigger. They got to go badder. They got to go more absurd. How? I don't know. I'm going to leave it up to the experts. But, I think it'd be cool, you know, if, if like it starts out in the first episode, you see John Cena getting that thing cut out of his head and, you know, kind of getting to where he can't be controlled by that thing. You know, mm-hmm. they're off the leash, you know, that type of thing. Um, go in that direction, maybe fighting against Amanda Waller or something, something to that aspect. Um, you know, or. Like you know, like Skeeter said, if they, if they could somehow be setting it up for you know that battle that you guys mentioned, that'd, sure. that'd be great. But nice. I just we went into this not knowing what we were going to anything. Get. Yeah, each episode we still had though like you couldn't sit there and go like, oh, well, clearly they're going here, they're going there. So hey, man, just I'll I'll be here. I'm here for it. I'll be waiting. Yeah. Now season two, I as long as they stay away from with what they did the first three episodes, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they took those first three episodes and I feel like they were trying to appeal to every demographic and it didn't work at all. And that was, that was why no, but I'm glad they, I'm glad they released them all at the same time because if we went out of the way week by week, I would not have made it to, season, to episode four. Mm-hmm. I feel like this, they found their way now, as long as they can avoid that, they know what the people want at this point. Don't shove it. If you want to make a statement, make a statement. Don't shove it down people's throats, and we're good. That way, it was mm-hmm. the, yeah, yeah. So I am trying not to have too many expectations. Um, just like this, I would not have liked this as much if I would have had the expectations. Like for instance, right now I'm thinking, well, I want John Cena to draft a new Suicide Squad for for season two. That would be fantastic. Be cool. I'm in. You know, kill some D-list baddies. Yes, mm, yeah. I, I'm in. But if I, more. I don't have my heart so set on it that if we don't get it, I'm, I will be disappointed. So if that makes sense. So that was an episode. Actually, before we do that, let's get our grades, and then this will be an episode. Uh Skeeter, what did, what do you grade Peacemaker season one? Season one Peacemaker. I'm gonna go A minus, uh, just because. We had seven episodes, eight. the first three, eight. Do we have eight? Yeah. 
Um, so eight episodes, the first three, um, kind of stung with all the, the throat shoving. So yeah, I'm going to go a minus. Fair enough. Kevin. Oh, Hey, I want to taste it. Do you want to taste it? I want to taste it. A, I part of me wants to go a plus, but because of those first three episodes, I'm not going to, but a fair enough. Tyler. It is definitely an A for me. Um, oh, I feel like a jerk again. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, yeah, hey, that's why we have it. it it's just, you couldn't have made me happier. Um, the, the little things that bothered you guys in the beginning didn't bother me as much because look what else I was getting. Yeah. You know what I mean? I could easily just look right past it. And that's, that's, yeah, that's all I needed. It just give me all the other things the whole time to make me be able to look past that and it's a, it's a fantastic show. It's, it's great. That's fair. Um, I'm giving it a B minus. And I'll tell oh. you why. First first three episodes aside, they screwed up with the White Dragon character. Period. <laughs> that was wrong how they did that. Um, it's, it's lucky with it's not a C plus. Because of that, The re- I loved every second of the rest of it. But that was, that's like uh, someone... Tr- an Olympic runner running out of the blocks, falling on their face. And, you know, they got third place. If they wouldn't have fallen on their face, they would have gotten, they would have broken a world record. If that makes sense. It just wasn't, that was a big misstep. Maybe I'm wrong and next season will change it, but that's. You're wrong. You're totally allowed to think that. Can't get them all, but. So this was was Kevin's last episode. No, I'm just kidding. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, check out the website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use com. We paid extra for it. Go to the Facebook, go to the Twitter, go to, uh, get your tickets for Las Vegas, amazing comic con. We will have a table. So come meet us. Um, some people from Florida are even going to be there, you know, in the top, you know, I'm pointing, I'm pointing at him right now. Yeah. And this guy down there is going to, this guy right here is going to be there too, Skeeter. So Yeah. I can't wait. A bunch of our friends are going to be there. A lot of people, if you've seen them on the show, are going to be there. Not our New York friends, unfortunately, but a lot of the other people around the country are planning on coming. So I'm so excited about this. Peacemaker Peacemaker will be there sitting (laughs) next to me. Yes. Solomon will probably be sitting next to you, too. (laughs) And maybe even Gorilla Grodd, if we're lucky. Oh, look out now. (laughs) <laughs> so until next time i'm dub i'm here with tyler i'm here with skeeter i'm here with kevin keep on geeking on we'll see you next week you have been listening to the latest episode of the i Heart geek show make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com make sure to follow us on instagram twitter and facebook and if you check us out on youtube make sure to like comment and subscribe And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.